I'm excited to have Tristan Nance here with us today from Ascentix Innovation Labs uh, on our focus. He's going to be our focus for the business spotlight interview today. My name is Brent Thompson. I'm a business coach here at Action Coach Lake Norman, your local education, training, and business coaching firm. So Tristan, good to have you. Uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and what primary products and services you guys offer to the community. Yeah, thanks, Brent, for having me. So I am the owner of Ascentix Innovation Labs, and what we do is sports nutrition gummies. So we do it a little bit different than everybody else. We have the most efficacious, efficaciously dosed gummies on market. So our hero product right now is an essential amino acid gummy, and we own the only SOP, the only formula that's clinically dosed and can stand up to the powders. So that's kind of what we're moving toward. That is our only product that we have right now, but we plan to go further into the industry and kind of see what we can disrupt in the gummy space. Got it. So it sounds like the word innovation in the name of your company actually does mean something here. So that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, I want you to think back, right? So you're a business owner. You've been at it for a little while. Um, if you had to start from square one in business, knowing what you know now, what are a couple of things or one thing major that you would do differently? Yeah, I would probably say the biggest thing would, I would have just put my head down and failed really quick. So I've actually been at this for two years. We've been trying to get this dosage into gummies and it's been very hard. So a lot of on and off, like, oh man, I don't know if we can do this. A lot of people telling me that it couldn't be done. Um, I think that I wasted a lot of time if I would have just put my head down, put the money where it needed to go, made the connections and the decisions a lot quicker. I think that I would be a lot farther on my path of a business owner, but you live and you learn. So now I keep that in the back of my mind and just try to get things done. Not too fast, but sometimes fast is slow and vice versa, but yeah. in, a, in an appropriate timing. No, no, that's good. And and kind of piggybacking on that, I know you hit on it a little bit, but what have been your biggest learnings or or lessons as an owner or, or as a as an employer as well um, since you started your business? Yeah, my biggest lessons is probably I would have to say, oof. So you learn a lot. So the biggest one I'd probably say was to to look for help sooner. I think that a lot of people think that they can do everything themselves, which I'm a firm believer in that too. I can do everything, but at the same time, sometimes it's better to have a professional do it or somebody that's been in the industry do it or mm -hmm. just to have a nice sounding board, talk to people, ask for help whenever you need it. It doesn't, it doesn't make you weak or you know, less of a, a business owner or entrepreneur. It kind of actually makes you smarter because more heads are better than one. So it's kind of like that strength in numbers concept. No, that's great. Um, some humility along the path. It probably is going to come no matter what. So yeah. maybe to choose humility rather than go through the experiences of humility will uh, definitely get definitely get you where you want to go quicker. That's a good one. Um, so what are some common misconceptions about running a business that people from the outside, maybe family, friends, there's some misconceptions on what you do and as far as running a business goes and how do you address those when you do have misconceptions? Yeah, I think that the biggest misconception is that you have all the time in the world because you're your own boss. Mm -hmm. So what I like to tell people is just because I don't have a, a quote unquote boss, I still have customers that I have to report to. I still have an advisory board that I have to report to. I still have a bank that I have to report to. So yeah, you lose I guess what you would consider a traditional boss, but now you gain bosses. So instead of just having one person to report to, which might be in your straight funnel and you go to work and you do that one thing, now you're going, you're reporting to a multitude of people over mm -hmm. various times and it, it never really ends. So it's like people join or do entrepreneurship because they think that they're only going to have no boss and they'll get to do whatever they want to, but it's actually the total opposite. You gain more bosses. And that's, that's my perspective at least. <laughs> yeah. So you can't just go to the lake all day if you want to all week. Hell I wish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day I'll just hire a, a CEO or something. Just be the yeah. president. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. That's good. Um, so what do you attribute your growth to? Maybe that's the growth of your business or even your personal development itself. Um, just always being open to learning. I think that that's the that's the, the most important part. Um, during this journey, I've taken FP&A courses. I've done little free courses over social media marketing, how to set little simple stuff up that, you know, it's not sexy, but it needs to be done. Uh, so I think that that's really kind of what's taken me to the next level. And again, asking for help, asking those questions to really fully understand not just the business, but the full aspect of the product because we got a lot of chemistry in it i'm in a, i'm a finance guy i don't do science but my product is science so i have to know enough to be dangerous right that, that that's really what's been the biggest compounding like activity is just being open to learning so you've had to learn right yeah i, I mean it really ain't that much of a choice especially in sports nutrition because Right. If you don't know your stuff and you're the owner, they're kind of cutthroat sometimes. So mm -hmm. I'm one of them per people I don't like to be like uh, called out or, you know, kind of like I, I'm not really like punk, but, you know, I, I want to make sure that I can at least stand on my own two feet. You know, if we ever do have to have a conversation about what is in my product, what it does all above and beyond. Yes, sir. No, you have to. You have to. Um, well, let's talk about personal life. So being a business owner, I guess we all know work-life balance is a, uh, is a challenge as a, as an owner and as an employee, employer as well. Um, how do you balance your personal life with the demands of running a business? I'm not really a big believer in balance. Okay. So right now I'm kind of like all in. Okay. So I'm working my nine to five. I'm doing this, um, making sure that I work out and everything just to make sure that I'm optimized, but really as far as like going out and I guess having a social life, I don't really have too much of one. I might play mm -hmm. my Xbox every now and then, but that's about as social as, as I get right now. But okay, that's, that's my perspective on it. So you're, I guess you, what I hear you saying is priorities, right? Different seasons have different priorities and right now your priority is your business. Yeah. Cause I mean, this is, if I'm being fully transparent, this is probably, if this fails, then I'm just going to probably try to uh, climb the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. Now I never, we don't know what the future holds, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go all in on this to see if I can really grow yeah. it and see if I can really do it. And if it mm -hmm. doesn't take off, mm -hmm. then cool. If it does take off, then cool. As long as I'm putting all my effort into it, then right. that's all I can do really. Was a business owner and an entrepreneur all in is about really the only option. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Pretty much. It really is. No, that's good. It's, it's you, know, you have to have the, that right perspective. So um, what qualities do you look for with people that either work with you or work for you? i um, not sure where you are with employment right now as far as employer, as it being employer with employees. But if you do have employees, what do you look for the for in those people and um, if you want to hire in the future, what are you going to look for? What kind of qualities are you looking for in someone? Yeah. So, I mean, we don't have any employees right now. I do have an advisory board, so I'll kind of feed off what, what I look for in them. And mm -hmm. that's kind of internal dialogue or how a person feels about themselves. Because I think that if you feel like you do great work, you're going to at least try to execute at your highest capacity. So therefore, you know, your internal dialogue, how you feel about yourself, how you take care of yourself is like one of them high, high priority, like items along, you know, like with the basic stuff, like skill set, you know, I'm not going to hire, you know, e-com guy to come do my 3D design, obviously. But if there was an e-com guy that was like, hey, I really feel like I can do this, blah, blah, blah. And we could, you know, make some sort of deal work. I'm always open to letting people try. But, you know, the the internal dialogue, how you feel about yourself can would take you pretty far whenever you're dealing with me. Right. Okay. That's good. Um, let's talk about culture just for a sec. So work environment and culture, we know that those are, those are important aspects of, of business. And so if you take off and you're hiring, what are going to be some important aspects for culture and work environment for you? Oh, for culture, it's always going to be team oriented. Um, I'm a big believer in putting other people in positions to win, not just, mm -hmm. you know, myself and the company. So if I shine, I want everybody around me to shine. 
uh, been pretty vocal about that on social media, you know, uh, making sure that all my teams, especially on the chemistry side, you know, get their flowers now versus mm -hmm. down the road, just because that's, that's something very important to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much as far as I've thought about it because we haven't even got to the point of yeah. having employees, but that, that'll be the, the key factor. Good, good. Um, so what words of advice would you give to someone who is where you were two years ago, right? They're looking to, to start a business and grow a business. What, what words of advice would you give that entrepreneur today? Find the pros in whatever industry that you're in. Mm -hmm. So I'm really active on LinkedIn. Um, I follow a lot of the, the C-suite people, a lot of the senior people, and really just in general, the people that have been in the industry for a really long time. I steal their advice all the time. They might not know it, but I tell them like, hey, if this is a good post or this is a good idea or, you know, maybe think about something differently. I steal it, write it down. And then once you get to a position to where you feel like you're really about to take that next step, it might be smart to have an advisory board depending on, you know, what what you really want to do. That's what I would do. That's what I did. And it's been working out great for me. OK, all right. We'll close with this this one. And lastly, what is the best way for the audience to to contact you, to learn about your company? How do you want people to get in touch with you? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I'm super active on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, just my name, Tristan Nance, T-R-Y-S-T-I-N-N-A-N-C-E. We are getting ready to ramp up and fully launch. We haven't got this product to market yet. We're in the like the final stage again, digital assets and everything. We do have a website. So ascentixil.com. So A-S-C-E-N-T-I-X-I-L.com. That's how you can find the product, learn out a uh, little bit more about what we do. And then, yeah, LinkedIn is probably the best. If you want to get in contact with me directly, that's where I'm the most active. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time. Thank you for what you're uh, doing in our community to help people be uh, healthier. Um, we certainly wish you all the all the success in the world going forward. Thank you, Brent.